This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the Awesome Chat, the show where we talk with people in and around the Pittsburgh area around technology, around gadgetry, around social media, video, podcasting, all kinds of fun things here. And of course, you can check everything out at awesomecast.com, all the past interviews, and the main Awesome Cast show where we talk about all things tech and gadgetry and really geek out about things. You can subscribe to the Awesome Chat on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcast, and the video versions are on the YouTube and Facebook page for uh the awesome cast uh and of course please support the show uh keep help to keep the lights on here at uh pi- patreon.com slash awesome cast uh so this is a little bit a little bit of a throwback for me actually this is somebody i met way back in the day i did a little project called unsung the nonprofit news show along with my friends over at the pittsburgh foundation did it for a good long time and uh we 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 had visited the bear center for uh non-profit management downtown a part of uh, rmu robert morris university and that's where i got to meet our guest today uh thank you for joining me cindy leonard she is the consulting team leader at the uh at the uh, bear center as well what, what does that mean what does that mean what that's does a, that mean everybody asks that what does that mean um because when you know I'm, I'm on a technology podcast here so w- what is a consulting team leader doing on there um <laughs> it's it's one of those titles that there's no way to capture everything i do so if you really wanted to say what is it that i do at the bear center i always like to tell people i manage the consulting program mm-hmm. and the technology program for nonprofits at the bear center and there's some intersection between the two programs um so it, it kind of makes sense that i do that Awesome. So, so tell me, tell me. So, first of all, I, I definitely want to get into uh, the conference as well, uh, the Tech Now, now conference that uh, we, we've talked about on mm-hmm. here before. Uh, but what does the Bear Center do? Uh, the Bear Center is a capacity building center. So, we provide um, our our mission statement. Doesn't it's it's long, and I I am embarrassed to say that after twelve years, I still don't know it by heart. Yeah. I, I know the gist of it, but um, our tagline I think really sums it up really well. Uh, which is nonprofits build better communities. We build better nonprofits. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, so we do capacity building work. Okay, so is it kind of like the background work and, and what working with nonprofits to kind of build out what they're what they have going on? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Getting awesome. more effective, more efficient at what they do. Excellent. Uh, and, and and on the tech side, um, of course, that's a big part of it, right? It's a huge part of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, I had the fortune, you, you guys, uh, employed me to, uh, to, to film the keynote for the tech now conference out yes. there in Monroeville. Mm-hmm. It was, it, it was a fun time. It was, uh, a, a, and it's a technology prof, uh, conference specifically for nonprofits. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, which I'd imagine if you go to, if you're a nonprofit going to a tech conference, that's for corporate, it's gotta be a little, uh, it's, it's, it's got to be on a different level, right? Like there's there's more things specific for, for nonprofits, I feel. There is a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, it, nonprofits, you know, if it's a nonprofit technology, as, as much as I wish it were otherwise, um, nonprofits tend to be a little bit behind when it comes to tech. And when I started doing this kind of work, I've been at the Bear Center for 12 years, um, but I was an IT director at a nonprofit for eight years before I started at the Bear Center. And we're always a little bit behind in, behind the corporate world, I think, when it comes to tech. And there's there's so many factors. I mean, we could do a whole show on, you know, why I think nonprofit technology is behind in the world. But mm-hmm. let's let's not go into too much of that here. Um, but whereas, if if you had asked me the same question, how behind are we ten years ago or ten years ago, I would have said we're back in the nineties. Yeah. Now I think we're just we're coming around the. 2010s or the 2011s um so we're not as behind but we're still behind Mm -hmm. as an example i was thinking about this on the way over here um you've heard of slack everybody in the corporate world from what i understand uses slack and a lot of us in the startup e and podcast management and co-op world yeah absolutely ask a typical nonprofit person do they use slack they will look at you most likely and say what's slack 
Mm -hmm. That's pretty, that's a pretty standard answer. Um, so that's what I mean by behind just a bit. Mm -hmm. So tech now, and the other phenomenon that happens in nonprofits with technology is this concept of the accidental techie. So this is, you've heard of this before. I take uh, no, it. I'm no. curious to see what this is. Okay. Um, so, so I actually started my career as an as accidental techie in the late nineties. Um, uh, my first nonprofit job, I was hired as an administrative assistant. Mm hmm and I was going to school. My my first degree was computer programming. I, so I was in school. Um, when the one operations manager found out what I was doing for school, she's like, oh, could you back up the server every day? And that's how it started. Um, you get that one task, right? One task. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, well, we have this database. Do you think you could do something with that? And sure, I'll take a look. And then it's the website, and then it's the network. And before you know it, that's what you're doing most of your day. It's like, probably most of them start out like, hey, can you fix the printer and yes. it just balloons and next thing you know, you're the security expert. And it comes from all positions. It's mm -hmm. not just administrative. You know, sometimes the executive director director is the non is the accidental techie. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's the marketing or development person. It it just depends. It's generally the person who's either has an affinity or is unafraid. Just yeah, all right. I'll okay. I'll give it a shot. No big deal. Um, and some of those blossom into careers in non mine did, you know, mm -hmm. within a few years, they had me managing the tech full time, had it recognized in my title and all that kind of thing. Um, but for some people, they keep doing their real job, so to speak. And, um, tech is just part of what they do. So but those folks don't generally have the educational, the background, right, right. And they need a lot of help and they need some handholding a lot. Right. It, there, there's nobody really kind of pinned with you're the technology person, right. And, mm -hmm. and dedicating to that. And I know we've, we've mm -hmm. had this discussion a lot, uh, amongst the non nonprofit people that I've worked with before about, you know, especially around social media and, and things like that, like mm -hmm. messaging, like mm -hmm. you're too busy. It seems like the nonprofit is too busy doing the mission. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm hmm to take care of these things kind of around the mission that keeps it out there. Does that make sense? That, that is part of the issue. Mm -hmm. um, funding is part of the issue as well. Of course. I think that's always, that's always going to be a challenge. Um, knowledge is a challenge when you don't have an IT person in house. And that's true of so, a lot of nonprofits still just based on their size. You know, if you mm -hmm. have five people in the office, you probably don't need an IT person per se. But somebody needs to be able to at least have enough knowledge to talk to the vendors that come in and help you. And I feel like yeah. I feel like some of the um, some of the companies representing at the tech now, where there was a lot of that uh, service providers along that mm -hmm. line too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, we try to bring in service providers that know nonprofit culture and get right. it, right. and that helps a lot. Um, there was something else I was going to say after that, and it just it's it went. So I'll say it if it comes back. <laughs> nice, and, 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 and I know um, I'm trying to remember what I sat on on a session or two, and I think it was about uh, you know you know some sort of security or or, mm -hmm. or web or something mm -hmm. like that, and uh, and, and had a great uh, we we had her on the show a bit ago, Eliza. Uh, Eliza. Eliza. Uh -huh. Jeez, I'm not going to get it right. I'm, I'm glad I got it for the yeah, interview. That's all right. Uh, yeah. Eliza Sherman. Uh, uh, um, you know, talked more about the disconnecting. From mm -hmm. technology, which was a fantastic talk and goes right in with some of the mindfulness stuff yeah. that we do around yeah. around here in productions as well. It was really interesting. We we evaluate the conference every year. By the way, TechNow, um, if anybody's interested, it's at technowconference.org. Mm -hmm. I do not have next year's stuff up yet because right now there is no there's no date, there's no location for next year. I'm I am in the works on all of that and I have some really big big stuff in the works that I cannot talk about, mm -hmm. but maybe on a future show, I'll come back and, and we'll get into what happens in the next month. It's going to be really exciting if everything that I'm planning and, pans through. And of course, uh, uh, last year's uh, keynote is available right now uh, yeah. on the YouTube page as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can check that out too. That's exactly right. So Eliza, um, in talking about technology and mindfulness, and I was all on board for this. I did not know how it was going to be received with the audience. Mm -hmm. In the evaluations that came back from the conference, it was it was kind of a mixed bag. I would say maybe 70% of the attendees were so excited. It was almost like they had been given permission to turn their phones off once in a while yeah. and you know, not be buried in their email boxes constantly. And then the, the other 30% had reactions like, oh, well... It's a tech conference. Why are we talking about turning off tech? There's a balance to everything in life, though, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, because especially around tech conference, it's it's you know, and, and she addresses too. It's like make sure you get the hashtag, make sure you do this, make sure you take your selfie with the presenter and, and all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And then she yeah. even had a place for that. Yes. Uh, yeah. and and was able to kind of divide that out. It was it was like, mm-hmm. it was like refreshingly anti tech conference. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. at a certain point there, but but it is because especially people in this, I, I know you know as a startup is like, well, you're kind of attached. It's on my wrist. It's on my phone. I, I'm afraid of the fire. Right. And it's it's good to know that, uh, you know, that kind of message is out there. How much have we all apply that in the meantime is probably another question. And it's really hard. Um, mm-hmm. I quit Facebook two Decembers ago. Really? I, and I had been on since 2007 or 2008. Mm-hmm. And that was really, really tricky. It took me a long time to come to the decision to quit. It took me a long time to do the actual quitting because I individually messaged every person I was friends with on there to tell them what I was doing. And, and finding them, you know, if I was on Twitter and LinkedIn, I was like, we're on Twitter and LinkedIn, so it's still okay. Mm-hmm. And if I wasn't on either of those and I couldn't find them on either network, you know, here's my cell phone and my email. It's, it's cool. Um, it, was, it was a hard decision to make. I had a lot of feelings around Facebook, just all kinds of different things. And I decided that my life would be better without it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I chose, I make the decision and believe me, it was like any other addiction. The first month. All I wanted to do was log into Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely. It, yeah. it's, it's one of the things that we talk about on the one show um, is, is you always have a choice, right? You always, it doesn't feel that way though a lot, does it? Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. You know, when my mother sends me a text message, it, it feels like I have to pull that phone out and <laughs> respond to that, you know? Yeah. It's almost yeah. a Pavlovian thing at that point. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> tell me more about the tech conference. Um, you know, you te- so everything's obviously geared towards, um, the nonprofits and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what's kind of the special thing that people that uh, get out of that conference that they may not other places around technology? The thing I feel is most important about tech now is the networking aspect of it. Um, you know, you can, you, as far as keynote speakers, keynote speakers are great. It's fun to see people in person. But if you think about it, you can go to YouTube and watch most of the same people. Right. Not all of them. A lot, but, you a lot know, of TED Talks out there. Some of them. Um, yeah, a lot of TED Talks out there. Uh, breakout sessions. Yeah, you can go to classes. You can go to learning. You can get from a lot of different places. That That is an aspect of any conference that you can replicate in other ways. You can buy a book. You can go to a webinar, whatever. Um, but the thing that you do not get through books or webinars is that chance to meet actual other people that are doing what you do and facing the same joys and challenges in the work that you do. And that's why, to me, that's why tech now, and then we, we need to, we should talk about bagels and bites groups as well. Oh, yeah. Our, our uh, meetup groups that we do um, the rest of the year when the conference isn't happening, you know, but for me um, going to conferences that, that and meeting other techies is, is really where I find the joy in, in going to these kind of things. I don't know. You probably don't know this. So tech now is in, this will be tech, the 15th annual tech now coming up Okay. in September or October. I'm still debating months. It's usually October, but I may change that. Um, I have been managing 13 out of the 15 years. I've been the organizer on this conference. The second tech now, the first, the first tech now was not called tech now. It was called something tech town hall or something else before it got its branding shoes on. Um, the second tech now I was actually an attendee and it, it, I was so excited when I was there because and, and when, this is after you had made your transition to the tech person. I was, right? I was, but I was still, I was the only tech person mm-hmm. and that's a lo- that could be a really lonely silo, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's, it's, it's a different language, you know, when you're, when you're, it's not like you can go over to your non-techie coworkers and say, "Hey, um, I'm having this problem. What do you think about this?" You, you and have, they just look at you like you're out of luck with you, me. You have nobody you know? to jam with. No, you on, don't. On that That's stuff. a good way to put it. You have nobody yeah. to jam with. Well, tech now let me go jam with an awful lot of people, <laughs> and I was so thrilled leaving that conference. I had no idea that by this following year I would be had changed jobs and would be organizing the same event, which is really kind of funny. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Mm. Um, tell me about the bagels and bites then. Uh, so this is what you do kind of as, what was this kind of the supplemental for the rest of the year then? Yeah. To kind of keep the conversation going a mm. bit? It is. It's a, it's, a, it's a monthly meetup group. We actually have two bagels and bites group. And bites is B-Y-T-E-S. Of course. Which you don't get, of course, of naturally. Course. Um, 
we have two groups. One is based in Allegheny County. It tends to move around the city. So the next, uh, it's the first Wednesday of every month, except for January and July, because everybody is either coming off a of vacation or going on vacation. Um, and we have it from 8.30 to 10 in the morning. Uh, the next one is coming up March 7th at Grove Pittsburgh. So we're in the East End. And then we go to the Frick for a couple months. Um, the summer, the June summer meeting, I try to have it somewhere fun. I haven't booked a location for that yet. We have been to Animal Rescue League and had had dogs at our meetings. So we call that one uh, Bagels and Bites and Critters. Uh, years ago, we used to go every, every um, we used to go on r one of RiverQuest's boats and do our meetings there. So that was called Bagels and Bites on a Boat. <laughs> I'm a real creative person, you can tell, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so we tried to do something a little different and a little fun for that June meeting. And then August, September is usually Jewish Residential Services, which is in Rodef Shalom. Um, and then we go to Achiva in the south side for a couple mm -hmm. months. And then December is a, kind of an oddball. Um, I try to make December really fun too. So we, it's usually a Friday afternoon from one to four. And we just call it the Bagels and Bites Holiday Party. And we go to Dave and Buster's and we have our meeting. We do a white elephant techie gift exchange. My only rule with that is nothing over 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, anything goes. And I've gotten some really given and given and got some really interesting gifts out of that. I just found you guys playing <laughs> skee ball. At, you play skee ball. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I'm on the. Uh, I think I found your WordPress blog for the uh, Bagels yeah, and Bites. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, yep. You might have. Um, I. Uh, yep. <laughs> yes, they're having a good time, aren't they? That's funny. Uh, they, um, so I, I try to bring the skee ball. I, I'm not sure how that started, but, uh, every year I bring a couple of prizes and they literally compete on skee ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we just play some games and go home. It's, it's a good, it's a good time. That's awesome. And then there's a Westmoreland group. The Westmoreland group is every other month, uh, January, March, May do the math, you know, um, they are the third Tuesday from eight to 930, a little bit different. And my friend Gina McGrath, who is actually the uh, the director of technology at the YWCA in Greensburg, is the, she's the organizer on that group. Awesome. Yeah. So well, if you're too. if you're the the lonely techie in your nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. there's definitely a lot of options for you guys out there. We so, try. Yes. We really do. So you've been involved with this, what you said, 13 <clears throat> of the last 15 tech now conferences. Mm -hmm. Kind of doing that reach out, helping to connect um, um, technology people in the nonprofit sector. Mm -hmm. um, what is um, what? What's kind of your biggest surprise uh, uh, delving into this community uh, over the years? Um, I don't know. I I, I don't know about surprises. Um. I, that's a good, that's a really, wow, that's a great question. Um, I guess I'm always surprised that it, when people still haven't heard of certain things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and things that I would think even, you know, like you think were pretty common knowledge or common sense or common something, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of hard examples and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm really lacking. So right kind now. of in a, you know, methodology, like things like Slack or things like that, or, or just the fact that, you know, a responsive website mm -hmm. is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been dealing with that a lot lately. Just the fact that I say, and I've, I have taken to saying mobily responsive website or mobile responsive website, kind of drive it home a bit just to, so they're like. Oh, that has to do with the phone or a device or something. And to roll that back, in case you're one of those nonprofits, somebody who doesn't know that yet, or somebody else, that's the idea that you make one site that that reshapes to whatever device, whatever size screen you're on, it right? It responds. Yes, it responds, responds to the screen appropriately. Exactly. So, Hereby, yes. it's responsive. Yes. Yes. Um, but, you know, just this, the idea that... Um, I. I'll even talk to nonprofits. We'll just be having a conversation about something like that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I never thought about looking at my website on a phone. Well, you may not have. And I'm, I would almost guess you're of the older, the um, digital immigrant 
generation. They call it digital immigrant if you're not native to tech and digital native. Yeah. Um, but I guarantee that a lot of your younger constituents have looked at your site on a mobile and phone. And maybe only <laughs> will look at it on a mobile phone, right? <laughs> or so, we'll never look at it again on a mobile phone, depending and, and, and yeah, on Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and that's really important because, I mean, when you're trying to get the attention of people, that's where you need to go where they're at, right? Yes. Which became the internet, which became the internet on devices, you know, so. I still get questions like, do you think it's a good idea for us to have a donate now button on our website? <laughs> really? Well, you know, and, and me being kind of the, you know, trying, I, I have an internal smart arse that I have to keep oh, yeah. under control. Yeah, because I mean, these people, <laughs> these people are genuinely not aware. It no, is not an really obvious don't thing to them. So, no. but in your, you're kind of bridging that gap for them. So, and mentally I'm going, nah, you know, no, you absolutely should not have a donate now button on your web. No, bad idea. <laughs> and I, I would never do that to somebody. That no, of course. Like, of I think course. it's sometimes, you know, yeah. but they honest to God, they don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, that's part of why, you know, I, I like what I do through the bear center because we, we help them to get better at tech, but we also do it in a non-threatening kind of way. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, have been told that I'm a very good teacher. Now I don't see this because I'm the one teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've been told that you're, I've literally had people come up to me and go, you're so patient and you're so kind. And I'm frequently glad for the, you know, that there, there's, there's not some kind of little loudspeaker attached to my brain that lets people hear exactly what goes on in there. But you know, apparently I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at handholding. Good, good, <laughs> awesome. Oh well, God. you're doing a lot of good work down there. It's really cool to see, and it was really cool to see, uh, you know, something like the Technol Conference, you know, kind of in action too, uh, and see everything that goes on there. I'm looking forward to, you know, hopefully I'll be able to swing into the new the, this year's as well. Yes, I hope uh, so. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and uh, again, uh, let people know where they can find all these many things that we talked about. Okay, so <laughs> the Bear Center um, website in general is bcnm.rmu.edu. And I'm assuming Mike has some magic way to put this up on the screen. I, think, I don't know if I'm on the page itself. Is that yeah, what it lands it. on? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, so that's, um, we're, we're part of Robert Morris University, but we have our own site. Uh, and then downtown, I see right? downtown, yes. we're at RMU downtown. And then there's actually a little button. If you go to our homepage, I see there are tech now conferences. Oh, How down convenient. In the lower. All right. And that's technowconference.org. There it is. Coming soon. You see, it's still 2017 on there. Yeah, but it's coming. But I'll again, get there. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of media. And, and you guys can also see um, a lot of images. We were showing a little bit of it during the video here. A lot of images from last year. Again, the the keynote itself. And I think the keynote for the last several years are up on your mm -hmm. YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see a little bit of uh, what's, what's happened there in the conversation starters uh, as well. And yeah. the bagels and uh, bagels and bites. Bagels and bites. Um, I literally, I don't have a separate site for bagels and bites. I have a blog. I think it's bagels, bites, Allegheny.wordpress.com. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were showing a little bit there for you guys. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. And, uh, what was the, what was the other one? Do they have a site too? Westmoreland does not have its Westmoreland own site. Westmoreland does not have a site. No. So, all right. But I think, I think you guys are both up on a meetup, if I'm not mistaken. We're on meetup.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's one, it's one one group okay. that I publish both the both the meetings. And you'll get for. all the information in there. Mm -hmm. Meetup.com. Look Absolutely. for the bagels and bites uh, up there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Thanks. Nice seeing you again. Uh, and of course, if you guys have anybody that uh, you think we should be chatting with on the show, please hit us up at awesome chat at sorgatronmedia.com or awesome cast on the Twitter. We take all because, you know, you never know. We, you know we don't know who we don't know in the city right right and we'll be exactly. doing some cool things we're in our own fish bowls you know uh, you were a chance encounter because i was sent by the pittsburgh foundation the guy last week i met in my lift a couple weeks ago you know really? you never know okay. yeah it's a whole other story nice. uh but of course check out all the interviews over at awesomecast.com thank you everybody for supporting us thank you my awesome guests you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week <laughs>